Husky fans, welcome into episode number two of NIU Weekly. I am Andy Garcia, alongside the Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics here at NIU, Sean T. Frazier. And Sean, congratulations. What a weekend this past weekend in Atlanta. NIU football, 22-21 over the Yellow Jackets. It was fun. It was exciting. And it's what, you know, we were waiting to see what this team would look like, right, Sean? We've had the long offseason, a shortened COVID year last year, and NIU came out. They played strong. It was a four-quarter game, and the Huskies made plays when they needed to. There was a lot of Husky fans in Atlanta. It was just fun to be around, just a fantastic atmosphere, and for the get and to get the win, just outstanding. Yeah, no question about it. You know, a lot of a lot of questions were answered uh, in that game. Obviously, the win. You know, it's always great to get a win, uh, and to do that in that type of environment, a P5 environment, as well as being in the in Atlanta, you know, first game of the year. But what it did is that it validated a lot of different things. It talked to, we, we looked at the personnel. We saw the groupings. We saw the offensive side. We saw the defensive side. We saw the special team. You saw a lot of pieces from a, a rebuild with Coach Hammock and his staff. And, uh, and there was a lot of chatter, a lot of talk. I know there's a lot of talking heads that feel that they know. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about the student athletes and the outcomes that happen. So what you saw was a resilient bunch. Uh, we, we got down on, uh, uh, behind, we built back up, and then just a, 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 a conviction, hard work, tough man football that, quite frankly, set the tone. So congratulations to the Huskies, to Coach Hammock, uh, just a wonderful job. Yeah, a lot of players stepped up, and uh, we'll talk about it. A, a really action-packed show. Uh, we're going to talk a little NIU football. We're going to be an offensive coordinator, Eric Eisenis. He's going to bring on. We're going to talk a little men's soccer. They're on a nice roll. Won two matches in a row. Ryan Swan, NIU men's soccer head coach, is going to join us. And then later on, I get the chance to talk to Drew Hare, uh, a piece we're going to do a little bit later on. We're going to edit in. So uh, you won't see uh, you see Sean, but I get the chance to talk to Drew Hare. So that's going to be part of this week's NIU Weekly, uh, Sean. So uh, an action-packed show. What we want to talk about first, though, is we do have fans coming back to Husky Stadium this week, taking on Wyoming. And I know we're still dealing with COVID-19, and I know there's protocols to wearing masks, Sean, and I know you want to talk to the fans about that. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's a, uh, some people that feel that, uh, that COVID is over. Uh, the issue is newsflash. No, it's not. You know, the great news is that we have vaccinations. And uh, folks that are contracting COVID, at least they're not passing away. They're not dying. But at the end of the day, all inside venues, in other words, the skybox, uh, all inside venues, um, uh, we have to make sure we are wearing our masks. It's so important. You will be asked to put the mask on if you're indoors uh, in, in any of our facilities at Husky Stadiums or around uh, the campus because that is the Department of Health. And, and, and the recommendations that have been made that we will follow. So it's not personal. There's nothing personal about this. It's all about health and safety. Uh, please help us out. Help us help you. Again, help us help you uh, with this. And uh, at the end of the day, it's all about staying safe. We want to be uh, continuing to have fans in the stands. We want to continue uh, to share uh, the Husky cheer uh, and, and to do those things. But we need your help in doing that. So staff will ask you if you are not wearing your mask in these particular venues, especially inside venues, um, that to please have them. It's nothing personal. Uh, please help us with this. Also, we got a clear bag policy we want to talk about as well at Husky Stadium. Uh, so either purchase a clear bag or leave everything in the car, uh, Sean. No bags larger than your hand is the basic rule of thumb. On the positive note, though, Sean, tailgating, the yarder back. Can't wait to see all the NIU fans and students back in the stands uh, providing a, a nice home field advantage. So it's great to be everybody back up with rules. But, man, we can't wait to see everybody come back to camp. No, it's no question about it. We're open for business. And uh, these rules are really all put into place for safety, you know, health and safety, okay? Um, it's great that we're, 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 we're having fans back. We're, we're having folks around. We just have to make sure that uh, a few of these things are, 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 are taken care of as we kind of go through uh, what is normal now. No more new normal. This is the normal way of progression until things change, until we get certain things under control uh, on COVID, as well as just the overall safety, general safety of our patrons. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much for following the rules. Tailgating, parking lots open five hours before kickoff. That's 7.30 a.m. So get out early, uh, get those breakfasts going, get all those hamburgers and hot dogs, and then get in the stands and support the Huskies as they try to go 2-0 against 
Wyoming. We'll talk more about that. Again, tickets are still on sale too. Buy in advance, download them on your phone. Ticket prices go on game days. Uh, ticket prices go up on game day. So definitely get those in advance. Purchase at niuhuskies.com slash tickets or log in the, to your account at niuhuskies.com slash myhuskies. Also at the game, it's going to be a celebration. We're celebrating heroes and first responders, which is only appropriate on the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Prior to the game uh, and for the national anthem, a giant flag will be unveiled and there'll be a moment of silence. Also, student athletes are participating in a unity walk before the game, and all students and fans are invited to join in. They will walk from the Convocation Center to Husky Stadium, and then students will run the field before kickoff. Sounds like it's going to be a great uh, tradition starting off, Sean. Yeah, no question. This is a, a, a great tradition. Uh, on 9-11, I was in New York at the time. Uh, again, I think all of us who have uh, lived through that and understand the significance of the men and women who have lost their lives, um, both in the first responders, uh, folks that were uh, in the World Trade Center, uh, in the Pentagon, all the different things that happened during that. It still gives chills uh, on the back of, of, of back of my head about what all that means. So again, 20 years, I can't believe 20 years uh, as it's going to pass by. So kudos, congrats to those folks, those survivors, those individuals who, who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we will never forget that that experience, as well as those who rallied uh, to support our, our freedom in our country. Those are some of the news and notes. Now it's time to talk a little football. We are now joined by the Huskies offensive coordinator, Eric Eisenhuis, after a fantastic win at Georgia Tech, now getting ready for the Cowboys of Wyoming. Coach, again, congratulations. You guys have been working hard. The fruits of the labor came out on Saturday night. Patience, you needed a drive, you needed things to go your way. And you guys were able to work it out. And uh, congratulations. I know this is just the start of what you want to see the offense move in this season. Yeah, you know, obviously really excited to, that the guys were able to execute down the stretch and, and uh, pull out the win. I thought they came out, played well early. Um, you know, we knew we had to run the ball against them, uh, partly based on their personnel. They had some really good defensive ends and some linebackers. Early on, we tried to, you know, stay a little light and run, and, and they ran well laterally. So we really just said, hey, let's get downhill and, and get after these guys and try to negate some of that athleticism. And our guys were up for the challenge, did a great job. Harry ran well. You know, Rocky down the stretch made really good decisions with the football. And then Tyrese Ritchie just continues to improve his game and really step up when it matters. You know, you, you, you get the game, game plan ready, right? You, you get ready for what you guys want to do. And then I, I read some things like the first drive, or even going to the second drive, you guys kind of switched up the offense. Two tight ends that you saw what they were doing. You know what, Coach Hammock, and you're like, it's not going to work. We're going to change it up. I, I expand on that. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, we went in with, with different game plans uh, as far as personnel sets and try to be able to change things up. Not a lot of people practice versus heavy sets. And so it's one thing to be able to – we have personnel to be able to do it, you know, and, and adding some of those pieces uh, personnel wise was huge to be able to get into some different things and, you know, make people have to defend different things uh, from week to week and, and go in it. We feel really good about our receiving core, but it was the type of game that you didn't want to really get in a shootout. I mean, when you look at their running back, uh, their quarterback, if we could keep them off the field, um, it would be good. And we did feel like we could wear their and at one point they took out a defensive end, put an extra D tackle in trying to match our size. And, um, you know, Coach Hammock has been preaching physicality uh, all summer in the weight room. And then when we hit camp, you know, have it be physical, make these guys push to a, a level that they've never been to, make them learn that there's another, you know, level of, of physicality they can play at. And it really showed in that game that if you came out and punched them in the mouth, we really felt like, um, that would neutralize a lot of the things that they would do well. So, you know, you you go in with a thought, but you really got to see what the speed of the game is. Like, you know, once we saw the speed of the game, it was that was the best thing for us to do was get into heavier personnel. And obviously, I think it was 154 left on the clock. Um, we had two timeouts, and, and we went into a two-minute situation. And Rocky made great decisions with the football, didn't force the kids lined up. They executed it. It's really interesting with that that exact same scenario, three different times in camp, we said, hey, we're down by, you know, five or we're down by seven and we got four minutes left. We got to go down and we got to win the game here. Uh, we had already talked the night before about, you know, if we get in that situation, we're going to go for two. We decided what the play was the night before. The kids had already repped it. Um, so once we scored, there was really no 
hesitation at all. And our kids knew exactly what we were going to run and they, they did a good job executing. Sean. Yeah, I think that's a good summation. I've looked at the game a number of times, you know, the personnel groupings was one thing, but what I noticed too, just as a defensive guy, taking a look at you, uh, coach, is that the up-tempo playing fast on top of the personnel, the 22 and, you know, even with, even in the 11 personnel, that, that up-tempo uh, really caught them off guard. Did that surprise you? Was that something that you went into the game and taking a look at size, speed, all that? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, if you can go fast in situations, you can negate a lot of things because guys, they a, either A, don't get the call in fast enough defensively, so now you're going to get them into base. They're not going to get into a situation where – they're able to put their cleats in the ground and do things that maybe can't get blitzes called, you know, different things like that. So, you know, that was something we felt like, you know, if we hit a big play or we got something to go again, but we also wanted to be able to do it in heavy personnel. Mm -hmm. so people will expect it maybe a little bit more in 11. Um, you know, right away we did it. Uh, Rocky had a pull read. He pulled it, got a big play, came right back, did it again. The next play, it was a handoff to Harry. Got a decent game, but I would say we got good mileage. Then, you know, we just had done it uh, two times, ran a play, and they're substituting guys, so we jump in it again, and we get a free play, you know. So we didn't get, a you know, a score on that play, but you, you're going from first and 10 to first and five, and you get a free shot. So you never know, and, and Rocky understood that, and the guys went, and, you know, I was really – happy to see the kids just line up, go fast, do it. You know, you practice it, but you go against a different opponent. And how's it going to work out? But we did do it a lot at fall camp. And I think that, uh, you know, that work paid off. And that's something that our kids are always ready to do. And uh, you're right. I think that that just neutralizes guys. Uh, it, you know, seeing keys, seeing things they need to see defensively. They don't necessarily get a get a lock in on those things and do it. So, um, and the good thing was our kids felt very comfortable and were controlled doing it. It offense all starts with your quarterback, and you bring in Rocky Lombardi, uh, not just the starting quarterback, one of the leaders, uh, one of the captains on this team. Uh, talk about not just what you saw with him against Georgia Tech, but what he's going to bring to this program moving forward in this season. Yeah, I think we we started to see it immediately when he got here. You know, he was a, uh, a guy that isn't afraid to assert himself. He's an alpha personality. I mean, he definitely is. And, you know, he's a he state heavyweight wrestling champion in high school. I mean, you don't just win a state championship as a wrestler by going out and doing it. I mean, you work, but man, you gotta, you gotta be tough and you gotta be able to, to bow up when it matters. And when your back's against the wall, you fight. And that's the thing that we saw to him. He wasn't, you know, at all tentative coming in. Um, but he did it in a good way. He's very respectful of the guys, but yet, Hey, we need to be here. We need to be doing this. We need to be doing that. Um, now he loved it when he came in, he was like, coach, when I want these guys to throw, they all show up. He's like, man, he's like, I haven't always had that. He's like, these kids love football. And that's what I told him. I said, Hey, we went 0 six last year, but nobody's going to be shocked in our locker room when we hold up the Mac championship trophy. Nobody. And that's because they're going to work hard, that they're going to follow, and they're going to do what it takes to, to do those things. So I said, if you want a challenge coming in to a program and you can show where you've made a huge difference, this is the place you want to be. And he did it right from the start. And so I think, you know, the things that people don't see, are the things that we as coaches, um, you know, recognize the greatest. And that's, you know, what's being said in the locker room, what's being said you know, in, in the cafeteria, like today we're at practice and he's out there, he grabs uh, Messiah Travis, he grabs Richie's like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking in this play. And there's no gray area. Like, Hey, we get this look, this is where I want you to be. This is where I'm going to throw the ball. You know, this is what I want. And they, those guys are gravitating to him. They're listening. They're doing those things. Um, you know, he made a couple of nice uh, run checks in the game uh, just to get us to different looks. And, and, you know, we have the, the foundation of what we want him to get to and the game isn't too fast. You know, he's able to, you know, slow it down and, you know, get to those areas. Uh, gave up zero sacks on the day, which is credit to the O-line, but we also, you know, he, he had pressure twice. He threw the ball away. He didn't panic. Um, those are big plays. They're incompletions, but those are huge plays. Yeah. So it would have been about a nine yard loss. Instead, you know, he threw it away and gives you an opportunity to, to go to second and 10 as opposed to 
second and, you know, 25 or whatever it may be, you know. And so just those subtle things as far as how to manage a game and what to do. Um, we scored that drive. He knew we were going left hash. He knew what the call was going to be. You, you know, just let's go. And when there's a calming effect in that huddle um, and a guy that's an extension of the staff, that just it's it's so valuable. And, and we're getting that out of here. Sean? Yeah, I, I think you, you know, that, was, that was my follow up, you know, just taking a look at the way the way it was managed, you know, for the, uh, the length of the game. There were some stalls. There were some starts. There were some adjustments, but you know, I think that that's a that's a great way to put it, Coach. Talk talk to me about you know uh, you know just the offensive line. You know, we didn't know what to expect. A lot of folks didn't know what to expect a year ago. Obviously, a lot of guys back, but talk to me. Uh, you know, get, don't give me the grade. I, we don't need to get the grade, right? <laughs> but, well, but, I, I think I think yeah. Sean, the biggest thing that I you know when we came off of last season, we needed to get stronger. And we need to get tougher and those kids and we need to get bigger. And those kids, when we, when we started our winter workouts, we had two offensive linemen that benched over 350, which is not very good. And we had two old linemen that bent or squatted over 400. That's not very good. And I mean, you got linebackers that should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have two guys that don't bench over 350. Everybody else is 350 to 400. And we have, two guys that don't squat at least 500 pounds. And so when you look at that, that gain in strength and what that does for your confidence. And then you look at their body weights going from around the 290 to the 310, 315 range. Not only are you stronger, but you've got a lot more mass and mass moves mass. I mean, I'm sorry, but you, you've got to have something behind you when you hit somebody. And so those kids buying into what we wanted them to do and doing it in a good way. And obviously, Junie did a phenomenal job with them, motivating them, pushing them daily. Um, but there was no pushback. And then you get, you know, through the winter conditioning piece and you get in the spring ball and they start seeing, hey, we have a pretty good defensive line, but we're actually able to move some people and do yep. some. Things. And I think we're young in a lot of places, but we're not as young on the O-line. And that makes a difference because there is a physical development and maturity that needs to take place. And that really is what took place um, in our offseason. So what they were able to do, the biggest thing that, you know, like Coach Hammock, let's be physical, let's play fast, that will erase some mistakes. If you play fast and you're physical and you punch somebody in the mouth over and over and over, eventually somebody's will is going to break. And uh, our goal was to push them in camp, get them to be the guy that can eventually, you know, break the opponent's will. And I thought the guys did it. They just came out. It didn't matter. Hey, we're playing – an ACC school, it doesn't matter. And that's kind of what we told them. There's good players at every level. You just go hit them in the mouth over and over. Eventually, somebody's got a weak spot. And once you open that up, now don't relax. And that's the biggest thing that I think you saw of our guys on, on Saturday. It wasn't always perfect, but they played hard and they played physical and they finished through the whistle. And, you know, with that being said, we can we can do a lot of good things. We can clean up some of the technique. We can clean up some of those things. But if they don't play hard and they don't play physical, that, that stuff's hard to fix. And yeah. right now that group is playing with confidence and, and definitely embracing the, the, the level of physicality we want to have up front. Good. One final one for you. We need to talk offense all day. We love that. But one the, the, the main, I guess – theme right now that we know about this offense is they have weapons. You have weapons at the running back position, wide receiver, tight end position, and we're only going to see more of those weapons moving forward. We've just seen the tip of the iceberg to this offense and the weapons you have. Coach. Yeah, and that's the thing, being able to have different personnel groupings so, you know, that you can get into different things and, you know, whether you want to put in a heavy group and create more gaps and things like that, whether you want to get into uh, using some of those groups and then flexing people out. Um, you know, we worked, Hey, people are going to play bear. Well, then let's spread them out and, and let's see if they can match up right number off correctly and do some mm -hmm. of those things. It's very tough to run against, but it can be really good from a, uh, uh, you know, past standpoint. And, you know, just saying with adding, when you look at the guys, we added the pieces. So you add Rocky Lombardi, you add Clint Rakovich scored a touchdown. You had miles, um, you know, and he scores a touchdown. So you look at some new pieces that were added in and the way we're able to use them, that is huge. It's not just, hey, this guy can block for us, whatever. I mean, they are guys that can perform and do things that were added to what we had. You know, add to a guy like Tyrese Ritchie, 
You take a guy like Trayvon Rudolph, who was, you know, a freshman All-American as a special teams player, but now he's growing a better. Yeah, Cole Tucker, who's really steady and can do a lot of things. Liam Sorgham, who improved his off-field, uh, off-season workouts and what he's able to do, we're able to count on him. Uh, that's just huge because now defenses can't line up and say, hey, this is what they do, and, and we can throw something else at them. So if something stalls and they have a good plan versus it, we're able to put you know a different wrinkle to it and do something different. So, And I think the nice thing is the way we're built right now, um, hey, let's say you're playing in DeKalb and it's a 25-mile win or it's raining, good. Yeah. Let's do something different. We're fine with that. But if you're not built that way to be multiple in your personnel packages and do things, then you can really stall out and, and, you know, hinder yourself. And all of a sudden you got a 20 mile an hour wind uh, in your face and you're trying to run the football and you don't have extra gaps. So you can't be a physical team. And so right now I think we can throw a lot of different things at people and do it well. And that's really what's exciting because uh, that that's a lot of prep for people. Coach, I appreciate the time again. Congrats on the win versus Georgia Tech. Get ready for Wyoming and uh, good luck the rest of the season as well. We'll talk Thanks, to you. Thanks, Andy. Down the road. Looking forward to it. God bless. From football to another team that's on a roll, and that is men's soccer. Three and one. They won their last two matches, and we're joined by head coach Ryan Swan. And coach, congratulations on the start of the season. Three and one going into a big matchup on Friday night, taking on 18th ranked Marquette, hosting on third, uh, hosting on Friday night. Uh, what's been the success? What's been the secret sauce so far for the season? Well, first and foremost, I think, uh, you know, we have a good squad. Um, guys were hungry to come back and, and compete. We've had a lot of players that have been around the program for a few years now and, and know what the, the expectations are. And um, I think as we came in at preseason and in the first few games, we, we were happy with the way we were playing, but there were a few things that we needed to clean up. And I, I just think the, the team have done an awesome job of, of taking on board what we're asking of them. And we saw in the last couple of games, just, you know, the execution and the, and the final third has been exceptional. So very good. You know, side. Sean's got the next question. I mean, if I hear any more about Nick and, 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 and Mark Koenig, if I hear more about the Mark Koenig, uh Sean talks about them all the time. Sean, go ahead. You can ask him now about the Mark <laughs> Go ahead. No, those twins, I tell you what, they are, they are fun to watch. I know that uh, they have their personality sets too. And, you know, regardless of them being twins, they are different. They are very different uh, individuals. But talk to me about these goals, coach. You know, you are, you know, in the real game of football, uh, you guys are scoring goals. Does that, does that surprise you at all? Picking up from last year, talk to me. Don't give, don't give all the secret sauce, but there's a lot of goals being scored here. And uh, uh, you guys look like you're having fun doing this. So tell me a little bit about your your, your scheme or the personnel associated with that? Yeah, well, I think, you know, you, you, we don't want to keep mentioning them, but, you know, Nick has scored a lot of goals uh, in, in his four years here. So we, we expected that he would he would get himself in the score sheet. And I know he was frustrated the first two games. It wasn't quite working for him, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. You're the conference player of the year. Everyone knows about you. He was he was seeing a lot of double teaming and uh, yep. he just wasn't getting the space that maybe he was getting during his freshman and sophomore year. But um, I think we've added some pieces to to our attacking side of things that are, are really starting to click. And I do think the likes of, uh, you know, Nick and uh, when you look at Kiki Banuelos and, uh, you know, uh, Miggy, Minez, all these guys are, they've been around and I think they've gotten better over the last few years. And, and all, all those guys are threats in, in different ways. And just in the last couple of games, Nick has scored four goals, two in his left foot, two in his right foot. So he, he's worked on, on his weaknesses and it's just he's getting more and more dangerous all the time yeah but again i think it's a different weapons too I and mean, you talk about nick marcanic and again mac player here he's the only player you know what get this right four goals in the last two games leads in scoring four go four goals one assist nine points tied for fourth in the country in goals that leads the mac and we talked a little bit about his, his twin brother anthony with two goals a three-time all mac honoree so you got the marcanics and then you talked about Enrique Benuelos, and then you also have Pepe Martinez coming over from transfer from Western Michigan. So just like we talked about in football, it's just bringing those pieces together, Coach, and it seems like you guys are finding the right moves right now early in the season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think Pepe's been a great addition to us, as you, as you mentioned. Um, it was tricky for him. He he had played during the summer, and then he wasn't quite sure if we were going to be able to get things done in time for him to get here to NIU. It was kind of a, 
a late thing. And so he missed the start of preseason and he's come in maybe not as sharp as, as he would like to be and we would like him to have been. So we've kind of eased him in, but, uh, you know, obviously had his first start yesterday and, and got on the, on the goal uh, on the score sheet. And um, there's just, there's a lot of guys that I think because of the success that they're having here, they're, they're getting a lot of opportunities to play in the summer. So there's a few of them that come in with little knocks and, and not quite right. And so those guys were kind of eased back into it. And uh, we were talking about it at the game at Eastern, you know, as we made substitutions, the quality on the field is just, is fantastic regardless of who's, who's in there and we're interchanging them. So it's, it's very exciting times for us. And, and we're looking forward, obviously, to, to Friday night coming up here, getting a nationally ranked team coming in and then, when you look through the, the MAC, I think we've got two or three uh, nationally ranked teams right now. Just a lot of big, big games coming in, and hopefully we get everyone healthy and, and kind of clicking along at the right time. And Sean? So, Coach, talk to me a little bit about your motivational style. You know, you were, you were, I've watched you on the sideline. I've watched you at practice. Uh, I hope you're not going to get paranoid because I am doing that. <laughs> uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's very unique. Talk to us a little bit about your motivational style. You know, you've got a very aggressive uh, conference slate, non-conference slate. Um, you've got to be, you know, a bit of a, a shrinking of the uh, 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 of the head, so to speak, to some of your players that you try to get the best out of them. So give us a little bit of feel. Take us into your world about motivation, uh, motivating your team. You know, one of the big things, uh, I think, since since day one when I got here, I, I wanted to, to develop a program where we were, kind of seen as the standard within the, the athletic department here. And unfortunately, there, there's so many teams that have been exceptional that we haven't been able to catch up with everyone. But, you know, we, we've worked at that and we always talk about in the classroom, you know, where are we at academically and are, are we are we towards the top of the pack within within the Husky family here? And, and on the field, we were hoping to, to be up there, but so many MAC championships have been delivered over the last few years. Like, hey, we, get, we, get, we got to get there. And so... I do think the standard of excellence here within the department and with, within the programs here, it's there's always that motivation. And you see big results every week, and it's like, hey, we're kind of part of something big here. So that's always been uh, a part of it for us. And then I think just on the individual basis, we try and connect with our guys. We've been doing a lot of uh, sort of mental training with them and sports psychology with them. Is so we've been learning as a staff about it and how we can get the best out of them. And and I, I do think. When you're out of the field, you see it in the games, and I think you see it in training. Like the guys enjoy being out there, and I know my staff enjoys working with that group. So that's been the big thing as far as motivation goes for us. We we all enjoyed the coaches here, all enjoyed our time as players, and I now realise that I can no longer do it. Andrew every now and again thinks he can still jump in, but uh, wants to try and play. But we all enjoyed that. But the, the big part of it was always just you know, just the love of the game. And so we, we try as much as the wins and, and losses, you know, will be judged on those things. The other thing is we know for these young men that, that being part of a game that you love is should be at the forefront of our thoughts. And so that's always our motivation. We're there, we're competitive people, but we enjoy being on the field and we want our players to enjoy that and kind of work for each other there. Coach, Great. you mentioned about the MAC and some of the teams ranked at West Virginia in the MAC, currently your fifth, fifth in the country, Akron 16th. So the league has changed a little bit. You got Akron, Bowling Green, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, NIU, West Virginia, and Western Michigan. So that makes up the MAC now. Uh, and you mentioned Marquette coming up. Uh, you guys host the 18th ranked Marquette Eagles coming up on Friday night, 7 p.m. at the NIU Soccer and Track and Field Complex. Hopefully a lot of fans can come out Friday night and have football on Saturday. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit, make sure you, you know, on Tuesday, taking on Milwaukee and uh, yeah, you take on the Wayne Cup, the, the, the honor of a uh, former Milwaukee assistant NIU head coach, John the Wayne, you guys uh, play for that trophy. Uh, annual. So again, you've got the Mac, you've got Marquette coming up on Friday and you got Milwaukee. Uh, so I know the, the sky's the limit and you've got that toughest part of the schedule coming up, but what a way to start out being three and one. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And I, I can see myself in the, in the camera there. No, normally the little one trophy sits right here, but uh, in, in 2019, when we won it, the guys got a little excited and, and they, they broke one of the pieces on the trophy. So it's getting <laughs> fixed right now. Uh, hopefully, hopefully to get returned here, but uh, no, I, I Every game we look at it, I think uh, it's just great opportunities for the guys to get out and, you know, we've been at great venues or we're, we've got some in-state rivals that are coming up. But we try and make every game really mean something, be the guys to get excited about them. And I know that as a staff, we get excited about the games. And, you know, sometimes you get new players in, they, they don't immediately understand the, uh, the rivalries that exist within our program and within the conference. But uh, the older guys, we, we, we've tried to instill it in them so that, 
they know that every time you step on, it's just no easy games. And so it's been fantastic for us. You've already, you know, we've been in Notre Dame, which was a great experience for the guys. And I think showed them where we are as a program, because that was a game, that was our one loss in the season, but one where we played really well and it was just that final execution moment. So now, you know, you'd fancy right now if we were to play them that we're a little bit sharper in front of goal and things are better. And I think the guys recognise that. So they, they're excited about all of these games uh, coming up. And again, to to get things rolling in this next sort of stage of the season with a nationally ranked team coming in Friday night. And I think it's going to be a great weekend of sports here on campus. I think it's a, a great opportunity for, for the fans to come out and, and see these guys play. Yep. Friday night, 7 p.m. The NIU soccer and track and field complex. NIU will take on 18th ranked Marquette. Get out uh, there and, and support men's soccer. Coach, appreciate the time and uh, good luck the rest of the way. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Have a good day. Take care now. One of the best things about this show, NIU Weekly, is we get the chance to talk to NIU alumni. And now we get the chance to talk to one of the, the great Husky quarterbacks ever in NIU program, and that is Drew Hare from O'Fallon, Missouri. Uh, played from 2012 to 2016. 2014 MAC champion, led the Huskies over Bowling Green 51-17. But we wanted to bring Drew on, too, because it's Wyoming week. And uh, Drew's got some really good stories from playing against, uh, you know, here we talk about how you outdo Josh Allen. That's what we talk about here. So it's great to get you on. And, uh, uh, oh, and I know I, you're coming back for the game this week, right? Coming back in town. I am. I'll be there. I'm excited too. It's first game back since what homecoming of 19. So yeah, I'm excited. What were your first thoughts when you saw that NIU beat Georgia tech? I mean, I wasn't surprised. I mean, that's all, uh, it's just kind of what we do every year. You know, we have a chance at a big school and, you know, sometimes those schools, pay a little bit of money and we come in there and take that and take home a win. So it's huge. That's nice. I, I want to go back because we are talking about Wyoming weekend uh, and, and it was a crazy scene, September 3rd, 20, September 3rd, 2016, but really went into September 4th. What we kicked off at one 30 in the morning, uh, taking on Josh Allen, yep. you know, the Buffalo bills quarterback and the Wyoming Cowboys, uh, uh, they got the win, but the numbers you had, it was a really good game. You were 24 of 39. 329 yards, three touchdowns. You had a rushing touchdown. Game went right down to the wire. But what were your thoughts? What are your memories of that game? And, and just waiting forever to take on the Cowboys. Yeah. You have a good game. And again, not the outcome we wanted. Getting home really right. late, really early. I mean, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I mean, so just going into the game, you know, we knew Josh Allen was already going to be a pretty – we knew he was going to be drafted pretty high. Um, has all the tools. I mean, just – the prototypical NFL quarterback um, going to the game first game back from the Achilles injury. I remember, you know, in game week, still not feeling, you know, still didn't feel like my Achilles was there hundred percent, but, you know, got to the point where I felt comfortable playing um, and was really just excited to get back out there. Um, going to the game. I mean, the environment was really cool. I mean, you, you start warming up and they always talk about the elevation and you don't really, you don't really understand just how impactful it is until you get out there and start start kind of jogging around and start getting the feel for it. Um, I remember a lot of our receivers just in pregame, you know, we were going through just some simple routes on air. And after just looking over and you're like, dude, are you okay? He's like, I'm gassed right now. I mean, this, that was like, you looked at three or four of them and they were like that. Um, so you really just don't know the effects that the hill elevation can have on you. As far as the game itself, uh, you know, we played, we played well at times, most of the times I should say, um, you know, there's just a few things that I know I did. I remember specifically that ended up costing us down the stretch and, you know, statistically had a great game. Um, just a few plays that you wish you could get back and that uh, you wish you could have turned that three overtime loss into a three overtime win. So it's what it is. We lived and we learned and, you know, it was a, it was a really good experience. But Kenny Galladay, uh, had a really big game. You guys had a nice connection uh, with that game, uh, a big time. Uh, again, taking on Josh Allen, but you and Kenny had a, you and Kenny had a really nice relationship, especially in that game. But uh, mm -hmm. talk about uh, how you and Kenny Galladay have uh, has stayed in contact because you played with some really good wide receivers, not just Kenny, Christian sure Blake, Tommy Lee Lewis, BB. You, you've had some really good receivers. Right. You stay in touch, and uh, what's your relationship like with Kenny? Oh yeah, so Kenny. I mean, Kenny's awesome. Um, through for all of his private workouts, you know, leading up to the draft. Um, I mean, just can't say enough good things about the guy. 
actually got to go visit him in Detroit uh, two years ago, you know, before all the COVID stuff was going on. Um, got to go watch him play the Vikings. It was the game Marvin Jones actually went off for four touchdowns. So got to go see the game where they only got to target him like one time. But uh, just good to see the guy. I mean, he's he's been, you know, really making an impact in the NFL and just signed that very lucrative deal. Yes. And I mean, he he deserves it all. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy for him and his family. I mean, he, he truly deserves everything he's getting. And Christian Blake and, and BB, Tommy Lee Lewis. I mean, what a line of receivers you had the chance to throw to. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had, we had so much talent everywhere. I mean, you talk about not only receivers, I mean, we had linemen that are in the NFL, you know, we had some backs that had a brief stint. I mean, it's, uh, NIU truly puts out some serious talent. So blessed with everybody around me. 2014 MAC championship, 51, 17, the win over Bowling Green. Uh, I know that's got to be one of the highlights of your career, but what other, what other highlights stand out for you with your career here at NIU? Yeah. Um, I mean, the MAC championship was obviously number one. Um, I mean, other highlights. I always come back to the game against Ball State where I, I think I still have the completion percentage record. Um, you do. So that was, that was one of my highlights. I mean, I just remember not only just because of the stats and everything going on, but it was just one of those days where you truly felt like you could do no wrong. And I mean, now my, my big thing now is golfing. And I like definitely can't find – find any similarities into having one of those days where nothing's going or where everything is going right, I should say. Right. Um, but that was – that game against Ball State just truly felt like everything was clicking, just felt like we could do no wrong. Um, other highlights, I mean, just making it back from the Achilles injury. I mean, I ended up tearing my Achilles, what, in November of 15 and made it back for that first game against Wyoming. So, um I mean, I was I was proud of myself for that. I know, obviously, got hurt the next week after that, but still, yeah. just making it back in time for that, I felt like was pretty cool. So, tons of highlights. I mean, more so the guys in the locker room. I mean, it's if if I miss one thing about NIU, it's definitely all my friends. So, what have you been up to now? What is your career like right now? Yeah, so now I'm got a grown up job. You know, working in the real world. Um, so I'm it working stinks, for sales. Doesn't it really? it, it, it does. Not. No, it does. It does. I've got a great job. I've got a really good company. Um, luckily, I picked a field that's very competitive, very close to home where it comes from as far as, you know, growing up in athletics. So mm-hmm. really, you know, excited about all that. Just uh, my fiance and I, who my fiance was a former soccer player at, at NIU, oh. um, just bought our first condo. So We'll be moving in there soon and then getting married here in October. Great stuff. Congratulations. And again, we're looking Thank forward you. to having you back on campus and uh, I hope you see you on the field. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. Been great to talk to you again. You had the chance to take on Josh Allen. You beat him statistically. Maybe I'm not. I beat him at statistically, least you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate the yeah, time, Drew. And uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you come back. I'm glad you're still part of the NIU family. I'm excited. I'm excited to be back. So thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. As we wrap things up here on this second episode of NIU Weekly, really action-packed show. A lot of good things happening around campus, Sean. I want to bring up the upcoming schedule. We mentioned with uh, with men's soccer and, and Ryan Swan taking on Marquette Friday night, 7 p.m. Also, men's tennis there at the River Forest Collegiate Invitational. That's in River Forest, Illinois. That's this weekend. Uh, a little volleyball on the road at Charleston. Uh, on Sunday, women's soccer host Illinois State at 2 p.m. And then on Tuesday, of course, NIU men's soccer taking on Milwaukee for the Lang- Luang Trophy. That's at Milwaukee. So uh, a fun schedule coming up. Uh, again, hopefully a, a huge crowd coming out at the Husky Stadium on Saturday for NIU taking on Wyoming. Should be a lot of fun. We'll be on the network on the radio 12 p.m. Bill Baker, Mark Lindo, and myself will have kickoff around 1230. ESPN Plus will have TV. Sean, looking forward to it again. Hopefully you'll have a lot of fans out at Husky Stadium. Yeah. You know, again, we're open for business. We're looking forward for Husky Nation to be uh, be all the way live and proud uh, of what's going on. And uh, we have some momentum we want to keep up, but we need our fans ready to go, make sure they're masked up in those uh, those interior locations, but most importantly, being passionate about our Huskies. Special thanks to Eric Eidens, offensive coordinator for NIU football, and Ryan Swan, Husky men's soccer coach, and Drew Hare, former NIU quarterback, coming on and reliving some of the moments from Miami and some of his – uh, his career. Uh, that was fun. Good show. Special thanks to Sean. Sean, we'll talk to you next week. All right, let's get that win. I'll see you on the sidelines for football.
I appreciate it, Andy. God bless you. Let's go Huskies. For Sean Frazier, I'm Andy Garcia saying thank you for watching NIU Weekly. As Sean said, go Huskies.